we uh, did everything. So from the information, we designed the uh, modeling using the EI modeling. So we had uh, such an EI diagram to represent your information to be a database, right? So you see from the EI modeling, as we discussed a lot, uh, this is not close to our database. So to our goal is to create the database using the computer, right? So we need to use something language or file system, file structure that can be uh, managed by the computer. So we convert into the relational schema diagram that is the relational model like this. Okay? So using this relational schema diagram, eventually the last two weeks we create what? It's a table, for example, employee. So we create an employee table. So ID and so on, department. So we have the foreign key, so the ML. That's for this one. However, when you create the table, that doesn't mean that your DBMS software create like this. This is just a representation, my idea to show how it be. Okay? So in inside the DBMS Oracle, for example, or MySQL, or SQL so inside the DBMS, <coughs> how the DBMS create the employee database, employee table, or department table. Does it look like such a rectangular shape? No. This is our image diagram to show. So it looks like the tablet start because as we discussed before, relation table is a bunch of group of the data or group of the attribute. However, computer definitely cannot understand what is a group of people? What is a group of attributes? Then how the DBMS create the employee table and how insert the data? Using DDL data definition language to order to the computer to create such a table that you model, we can use the data definition language then. How DBMS create the database, actually? What happened when you create the table employee? Have you ever thought about such a thing? It's just a DBMS reserve uh, space mm -hmm. for every attribute. Space. So, what is a space for the computer? <coughs> a space. Space is not the computer science terminology. It's a general word. Story. Memory? Story? Mem hard disk story. So storage is the creating table? Hard disk. Actually, what really happens when you create a table using data definition language? A logical object will be created in the scheme of the... Uh, the logical object will be created. However, that's a logical model. Inside the database, on the computer, what happened? Uh, physical, uh, physical storage space. on the hard disk. Yeah, yes. How do you allocate the physical space? Okay. Uh, in the form of uh, extents? Form of segments? Segment? segment? <laughs> what is a segment? We don't know. It's a logical. Maybe. It's a still logical. Yeah. And physically, what happened? Physical in the form of uh, files. Five it files? Blocks. 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 Maybe it will uh, spe specify files on the hard disk in the uh, file system. Specify the file on the file system. What if, if we do not use the file system? Instead, if we decide to use the raw device without the file system? <laughs> That's possible, actually. File system is the one way. The first answer will be we don't have to worry about it. Right? Why? 
because the DBMS already can manage and... Uh, yes, DBMS is in charge of that. Then because of what? According to what? According to uh, the, the design of uh, the programmers of the DBMS. Did you design it? No. No. Then how do you know that? Decoding to the machine language. It's too broad. So my first answer is we don't have to worry about it. And you agree to why? Because DBMS is in charge of that. Then how can we convince DBMS is in charge of that? Because of three schema architecture. It's a uh, number 27 and midterm system, everybody, correct? So I believe I don't, I believe all of you know the, what is a three schema architecture. There is an internal, right? Internal view. What is the internal view? Internal view is uh, special, uh, specified for each user to, to use it. So do we need to specify the internal view? No, we no. don't have to. We can just specify conceptual view. Yeah. Then DBMS will take care of the oh, internal the view. What? View? What? That's my question. Ultimate. Okay, final question. To ask the, this one, I'm coming from the here. The EI model and through the, the internal what? So when you create a table, you are, you are going to use the data definition language in work, then ask the DBMS to create something. When you create the something, it will create an internal view. Then internal view, internal view what? Implementation. Do you implement? No, you do not implement. You just use. Relation, for example. Relation? Do you create a new relation? No. no. Answer is two words. In terms of structure? Structure, yes. It will create the data structure or file structure. Okay? That's the, our final goal. So database will not be created such a like this shape. Instead, when you create an employee table, create table employee, it will create the data structure. Like this. Okay? That's the only way that computer understand. And you understand what I'm saying? So this is the Overall thing, when you first you get the requirement information, then model, conceptual model, and relational model, then create a table using DBMS. DBMS know how to handle internal. Internally, when you create a table, you will create a conceptual view, but DBMS will create a data structure for employee accordingly. Okay? At that time, your DBMS may use sometimes a file to for the structure, or sometimes you can use a flow device without file system, without file. Then, what is a file? You learned definitely in your it's it's a group of operating system class, right? It's a group of data that group is of data that is stored in one name and certain name on a hard disk. And on, a, on a storage storage device. It's a what? It's not data uh, group of data on So you know. You guys know first it group of data. has the data. Okay? So it has the data then. Just to have include the data. For example, so when computer communicate with other, what do you need? You need? So you can just uh, send through the data to other computer, computer can receive? You need protocol. No, you need protocol. What is a protocol? 
It's a rule between two computers, two participants. Otherwise, you cannot communicate. Just like the when I, my mother tongue is not English, and yours are not some of you guys are English, but we can communicate because we are using common language English. We learn, I learned the same grammar and the rules in English, and you did, right? Just like the, the two com, com, to communicate between two computers, you need a protocol. Protocol is a set of rule, policy for communication. What about the file? So you guys know the we need to keep and manage, store the data. Then to do that, what do you need? Something rule, something format. That is called file system my answer is usually what is that it's a data structure okay it's not also that everything in computer science are data structure not only database not only the operating system your program language is a set of data structure .NET, C, C++, all of them are data structure Depending on how to structure your data, it's a little bit different. Okay? It's also a set of rules. Okay? Compiler head knows everything. C compiler knows all the rules in C, and uh, your Java compiler knows everything in Java, just like the file is. So when you are using the file, file, what is a file? It's a data structure where you can store and manage the data, okay? So which means it has a certain rules. It's called sometimes file forming, okay? So sometimes it's a very complicated, sometimes it's a very simple. Word file format is very complicated. When I open the word file, I cannot understand, but when I open the plain text file, it's easy. It has just a file header, file name, and file ID, and data, or end of data, just like that. So, anyway, whenever you create a database, it will be something data structure in your hard disk drive. The hard disk drive or hardware. So, today, in chapter 17, we are going to discuss about such a file structure in terms of what? Database. We are not going to discuss about the application file, we are not going to discuss about the image file, but we are going to discuss about the file structure for what? Database. Okay? Yes. You have a question? No. no. I would like to ask you if you can collect uh, the, the, uh, the file that we have in um, the EFS by using the uh, um, uh, C++. Are you asking the using, for example, C++ language to connect the database? Yes. Yes. At that time, this is the file so, uh, data structure for language. So there might be something storage like the integer i or e employee m character, but this is different data structure. Their data structure obey the rule of, for example, relation. Okay? So we are going to discuss about the such a file structure in terms of database. Okay? Today. So we are not going to discuss about the general file structure that you have learned in operating system or image. Image is the file that has what? Something image data. So pixel information or some red color, blue color. It's a totally different format. But anyway, it's a file structure. But we are not going to discuss about such a data structure, but only the file. So long time ago when the database model was proposed at the time that right to definitely think of how we can store the data at the time the file structure was used the first time 
because it's already well defined and easy to use. Okay? But that is not enough, definitely. As our requirement is complex and growing up, then this will be changed by their own format. But still, they use their own data structure. The Oracle may have their data structure for table. Okay? And they're using C is a construct, and depending on the number of color that you enter, it will get dynamically <coughs> increased something like that. Or if you are using the object-oriented database, you do it, it will be one object. Okay? So we will discuss about it. And one more thing. This is a little bit additional thing. So then what is a file system then? Somebody uh, answered the file system instead of file when I asked where the data uh, is stored or whatever. What is a file system? Yes. It's a bunch of entries for the uh, for the name and location mm -hmm. and size of any file mm -hmm. or folder uh, on the hard disk drive or uh, CD-ROM. A very complicated answer. Any simple answer? Physical partitioning of the what? Parties? Operating. Operating system? Anything? It's a table uh, 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 located in the first of every uh, partition or disk to uh, store the names and uh, locations of the data structure of the file on the hard disk. Just think about if you have only one file in your operating system, do you is it easy to manage? Yes. Because you have only one file. You, you don't need any other things. But think about you have the one million virtual file. You need to do search, you need to do manage, you need to do grouping. Yeah, it's like so it's index. not easy. It's like index. Okay, sometimes we need the index. So that is a reason why don't we group? Make the, make the files as a group. That is directory. Okay, we need uh, some additional data structure that is directory. Directory is the location to group the file, similar files. Okay, also sometimes I want a list of the file, for example, dir command or ls command. Or sometimes I want to copy, I want to move, I want to do something. So there are many operation command as well as additional file structure additional structure in addition to the file structure so why don't we make the package group of software data structure for file so that is the file system so file system is a software to manage the file okay then you when you Purchase the hard disk drive, new hard disk drive. Okay, you need to install the file system to use. If you want to use a raw device instead, yes, you can do that. Which means you can define such a file structure directory to the raw device without using this one. But if you decide to use the file, which means there is a existing file data structure. Then if you decide to use the, this one, you need to install that software. Just like I'd like to make the presentation file, you need to install Microsoft presentation or a freelancer in IBM or whatever. Any software you need to install. Just like that, to use the file, you need to install the file system. Actually, that is not free, but most of operating system support the free file system like the FAT, 32 FAT, 16 NFS for the network file system, UFS for Unix file system, NTFS for the Windows NT, and a bunch of other file systems. But some microsystem is not free for their file system. You need to purchase by paying additionally. Okay? So that is the file system. Okay? So don't be confused with the file and file system. Then, Let's see the. Oh, before that. That's like shit. This file and file system, as we discussed, is a software. 
for what? Hardware. So, which means I purchased the new hard disk drive, like the disk. Is there anyone who opened the cover of the hard disk drive? Anyone? Nobody? Yes. You did? Yes. What, yeah. did. what happened? If I open it, it will not be the guaranteed the hard disk drive. Warranty. Right? For hard disk drive. Mm -hmm. You can see uh, uh, plates. You can see head activity. What is it called that plate? Disk. Are you saying that this, the circular one? Yes. This is called disk. disk. Okay. It's nothing but disk. It's an official name. It's a disk. You can see the disk. Okay. And you can see the, the head actuators. Head actuators. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. That is called disk arm. Okay. There is an arm moving forward <coughs> and backward. Also, you can see something axis is yes. called. Splinter. Splinter is rotating. Why? Because our data, when you create the file system, when you add the new data, when you manage the data, that data will be located on the surface of the disk. Actually, disk is, if you cut this one, it can be like the that. If that is open, it's a zero, and close, it's one. Any Media is the same thing. Okay? Magnetic tape, CD ROM, Blu ray, DVD, they are using the same basic technique. Open, zero, close, one. Because the computer can recognize only yes or no binary data. Then, depending on how that, how much more data you can make to this, it will determine the capacity. So we can say the 600 megabyte to 700 as the CD ROM and the 4 gig as the DVD ROM. Blu-ray keep the more data, but their basic idea is the same. So this is the disk. So to find the specific location of the data, zero or one, how can you find the disk? Okay, X or Y coordinate is not a good idea because it's a circular. It's been divided into sectors. Mm -hmm. So first, you should know this is called a sector. No sector track. track. This is called a track. Okay, track is like the track in the field. Okay, so same distance from splinter. Okay, then if you have the multiple disk, the same track number is called cylinder. So when you purchase a new hard disk drive, you can see the the number of a cylinder, which means how many of how many tracks of yes. each disk. Okay? The more the bigger capacity. Okay? So track. Each track divided by the same length or sometimes the same number of lengths for each track. This is called the sector number. So each sector has a unique ID, unique name, unique number. So if you know the sector number, you can find the where is located. Then how can we reach such a data? We have the disk arm here. So disk arm can move only forward and backward. On tip of the disk arm, there is a very important thing. This is called head. And there are little tiny gap between the head and surface of the disk. So to read the data, 0 or 1, okay? Then, in case you throw your hard disk drive, sometimes it will, so it is moving, movable. So sometimes it touch unexpectedly. That may cause a scratch. So if you got the scratch, you cannot read the data. That's it. Then that will be bad sector. Okay, sometimes if this is a very important sector and the master boot record, then you cannot start up your system. Okay, anyway, yeah. Physically, mechanically, how can you reach the specific sector? Okay. For example, this data. Header is located here. First, you need to rotate. Like this. So that 
moving backward. There are two movements. One is rotation. Another one is the moving forward and backward, disc arm. So that is the reason it takes a long time. Much, much longer than your CPU. Okay? So your CPU has to read the improved name. So what happened? So this might be, might not be possible in the computer at the CPU. Like we read A, register R, 1, something like instruction. Okay? So in instruction will ask this one. Then, how fast is the CPU? When you, when you purchase the new laptop, what do you consider? CPU speed. CPU speed. So, what is your speed? What is your CPU clock speed? 2.20. Two, two, two Less than 2.7 gigahertz. What does that mean? The higher the better? Yes. Yeah. Expensive. So, what does that mean actually? 2.7 gigahertz. Have you ever think about it? You should. You are in the computer science. Your uh, niece may ask, what does that mean, 2.7 gigahertz? Yes. The CPU has an internal clock. Mm -hmm. In one second, uh, this uh, will, uh, the clock will go on, uh, on and off, on and off, uh, 2.7 giga mm -hmm. times. Then why that is important? Because uh, the CPU can Retreat. only, only uh, uh, operate within the time, within the uh, block uh, time. It's not very clear yet. So 2.7 gigahertz. Gigahertz means it looks like what? Frequency or cycle. Clock cycle. What does that mean? One clock. What happened during the one clock cycle? Some some uh, two point seven machine code operation. languages can, yeah, can take one clock cycle. Some of them can two. Can take two. Some of them can oh, take four. Anyone? Have you ever think of a clock speed? So probably you, when you purchase a new computer, you consider the clock speed then You never think about the what does that mean? So, we have what? Inside the, inside the CPU, we have space even. That is called? Registers. Register. Register is the first space that CPU, computer, can access the data. So register one, when some of them are reserved for the location of the memory, for the mapping table, whatever, so we have a register. So during the one cycle, <coughs> CPU clock cycle, we can read, for example, 16 register. Yeah, register 16 in processor. We have 16 registers. <coughs> so during the one cycle, we can read all of them. That is the one time. How many times per second? 2.7 giga times you can read the data. One cycle, you can read entire register information. Yes, sir. Sure. I programmed with assembly line. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, uh, some of the, for example, uh, moving any uh, data inside a accumulator, for example, needs one uh, cycle of clock. Mm -hmm. Sometimes pushing yes. all the logistics. Because I'm not a programmer in such a system, I'm talking about the general idea. Okay? So I probably, yes, you might be correct. So some of the right. operation need the entire clock cycle or not, but generally one clock speed. One clock cycle means you can read the entire information from the register. That is the one clock cycle. How many times? 2.7 giga times. Okay? Per second. Comparing to this one, this is a mechanical operation. Moving. You need to <coughs> operate the motor to rotate and moving forward. It takes much, much, much longer time than this. And you read the data. Okay? To select the employee. Then how can you address that problem? We use uh, uh, RAM. RAM. We, we can use the RAM because of what? 
temporary storage for the data? Something architecture. Somebody proposed uh, this architecture to reduce the speed gap between two media, CPU and the hard disk drive. Who proposed that? Von Neumann architecture. Most 99% of the computing architecture use such a von Neumann architecture. Which means we need a in-between media to reduce the speed gap. That's not enough. So sometimes we can put the storage area in the processor. That is F2 cache. 4 megabyte. We don't need such a huge size of cache. So then finally, hard disk drive we can leave that is formatted by this. And the reason I am talking about this general architecture is a database. It's especially database. It cannot be the independent subject. So, or individual. No, definitely not. It's running on computing architecture, so you should know the computing architecture, definitely. And also it's running on the operating system, including a bunch of the file system and the program. And also we have a lot of data structure, file structure, and algorithm. And also if you are working with other computer, definitely we need the network. So this is the interdisciplinary, not interdisciplinary, all oh, it's an application, it's not the pure, the core part, the database, it's running on such an old subject, okay? So you should have the good knowledge on the computer science, that right now is ready to discuss about such a five system, five structure in terms of the database, yes? Uh, hard disks and optical drives have uh, another level after RAM, which is called buffer. Yes. They can have from one, say, yes. between one mega and mm -hmm. 32 megabytes yes. in order to store the last mm -hmm. uh, data accessed by the uh, CPU and RAM. Yes. That should be discussed in your operating system. Okay? So, that is the reason whenever I am asked uh, how can I prepare the database job or the database administrator, why, how can I be a uh, better knowledge of the database administrator, study the core subject in computer science, okay? It's uh, everything you need. You need everything, every subject, every topic in computer science I need, okay? So this is the architecture that we discussed. So we have the disk. So there are a bunch of pile of disk and the disk arm and the head. So while the disk are rotating, we can move forward and backward to read the data using sector power multi. This is a hard design. So yeah. When you ask the read data R, register R1, for example, R0, then can operating system understand the what is register A0 in hard disk drive? No, definitely not. As we discussed, it has septa number and cylinder number. We need a such number. Okay. Who is in charge of the such a conversion? There's we need to convert. There is a controller inside. The yes, process. controller. Controller is required for any device in computer. Not only for hard disk drive. In case of hard disk drive, it's called the disk controller. ID device, ID controller. USB device, USB controller. Any device needs such a Controller. Controller is in charge of to order, to convert such a symbolic name to the physical address and return the data to the, the other. For example, if you're using inter, because you need to enter, you need to bother the CPU, that is called the inter, to process your current request by interrupting the this one. 
So that is another thing you need to care. You should have known this is basic idea from your operating system class computer architecture as well as the algorithm course. Okay? Then, as I said, we are going to discuss about the file structure in terms of the database. There are a bunch of different types of file, but in database, we need we need something here. Employee table need employee ID, employee name, address, and so on. Okay, it has it consists of several a group of column attribute, right? So to adapt such an idea into the file, so we can define the file as a group of record. We have another structure that is a record. Record is the group of fields. Each one is called field. Field is the same concept as the column. Okay? Then record is the same as tuple or data. Then this file has group of record. Okay? That is the data structure for file used in database. That's the basic. Somebody may ask, does Oracle use the same data structure to keep the table? Definitely not. Oracle has its own data structure. It's a quite different. Basic idea is the same, but they may not use a file. Instead, they can use a row device or their own data structure. Somebody uh, said the segment, or somebody said extent. This is their own. But here, this is the basic data structure, file structure used in database, which has a bunch of records. Each record has the same field, name, ID, and so on. Each field has the storage, which means number of bytes. So depending on how to allocate the bytes, <coughs> there are two types of fields. One is fixed length. Another one is a variable length. Fixed length means no matter what size of data you insert, it will allocate the maximum size. size. Maximum the byte. For example, name. I need maximum 30. So character 30. But sometimes I can insert a LE, LE, 3 byte only. But it will allocate the 30 byte. The other 27 will be waste of the space. However, variable length will allocate just amount of that. In addition to that, they need separator. We should know where is the end of field. So separator with unused, non-frequently used, rarely used data. Sometimes it is uh, something slash one or the not. It's up uh, to you. So this idea definitely adapted to current DBMS system like the variable character that you use in the oracle. That is based on the variable length the field. Fixed length field. Okay? So this diagram shows the fixed and variable length of the record. Definitely, this is the fixed length. It has a 30 byte for name, 10, 9 byte for the social security number, and a 4 byte for the salary. Why we need a 4 byte only? Salary. Because it's a number. So, to the power of 4, it will be 8 digits. So, I think 8 digits might be enough. Whatever. So, job code, department. But if you are using the variable length, so John Smith needs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bytes. 11 bytes, 11 bytes, with, uh, including one space. Then we need one more byte for separator. So that should be rarely used character or character set. Okay? Then another important 
Because database is a very relatively new area and more applicable application related. It's so nothing but actually software, but it has a lot of algorithms. Okay, so what is a block on, on, in on top, terms of operating system? Hard disk uh, block is a, a group of sectors that we told as one cluster. It, can, it could be read and uh, written. Uh, in one uh, command. Mm -hmm. okay. So your answer might be first, it's a data structure, right? Uh, so also data structure. Then, what is it for? Block in operating system is. So, for example, I'd like to read the data I from hard disk drive. So it will return the data I, okay? So I got the data I from here, will should return the CPU. Before that, the data will be stored at the memory, okay? For cache purpose, okay? Then at that time, so data I is one byte. To recache just one byte of the data, the memory? Yes? No. no. Instead, entire block, that is a block I'm going to define the later, some amount of the data, okay, where integer i is located in. This amount of the data will be returned. For example, this is the 512 bytes data will return to the memory. Memory will catch 512 bytes data. And I will be read by CPU. Then, do you think this is a good idea? We need only one byte. Why do we need to return 512 bytes? It takes a longer time, definitely, to transfer 512 bytes of the data instead of one byte of the data. Yes? This is the data structure of the hard disk. You can't control it. What if we can make the one byte block size? Well, you can't read more. Uh, less we can do that, but we do not. Why? Performance. As I said, 512 byte will take a longer time than one byte. Then how? Does it make sense? Yes. The the hard disk is uh, it is tracked and. Secret. So why don't we make the one byte data structure? We can make it. Yes, but the. Uh, then why we do not make the, such a small size the data structure? The geometry of the hard disk is depending on clusters and uh, uh, cylinders and heads and uh, sectors. Uh, CHS. It, uh, it will construct all the data inside it, and the controller only understands this. Yes. This structure. So at the time, my question is why we do not make the, such a smaller size the data structure? Fixed length. fixed length. Why don't we make the smaller fixed length? It will take more time and will make the controller more complex. It takes more time to return the 512 bytes. Well, sometimes you need to read uh, whole files, uh, large files like the file, 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 like uh, image files. That's so one reason. Actually, this one byte is not the only data that CPU provides in need. The more data. So whenever we need 
the data, return one byte, return one byte, return one byte. Compare it to the return entire 512 byte. Which one will be faster? 512 byte. That's one is another reason is we need just one byte. Then return the 512 byte where the data is rotated. Sometimes later, the other information in the same block can be reused once. Program or process are list of what? <coughs> sequence of instruction. Right? The next instruction probably around here. Not very far. Sometimes very far, but probably usually around here. So there may be higher chance. We need other data in the same data structure. So we do better have the bigger size. Not bigger than 512 bytes. Why don't we make the 10 megabyte the data structure? Trace of space. It takes a much, much longer time to transfer 10 megabyte. So that is called block. Block is, so can be defined as smallest processing unit in terms of storage. It's also transfer unit. So even though you need a one byte of the data, you can transfer entire block. Okay? Most of, almost all operating system use 512 byte operating system block size. That is called the blocking. Okay? Blocking is one of the way to speed up your system. Why don't we adapt such idea to database? Fine. So, instead of processing record by record, yeah, that's reasonable because the, our database consists of a bunch of the record. Instead, why don't it make the one block just like the operating system block? So we have employed data. So this is a emp dot file. So this one has a record, but this does not have the entire file system. A file is that this file consists of the block, for example, block 1, block 2, block 3. Each block has, for example, this one is a 512 byte, 512 byte, 512 byte. Okay? Just like the operating system block, in operating system. Why don't we make the, this is called a database block. Okay? It's a fixed size. It's a minimum unit to transfer the data. In other words, I need one record for lead. Even though I need the lead record only one data, entire block will be returned. Why? There might be a higher chance to be we access the neighborhood. That is called what? Buffering. It's a buffering. Also, the ratio read from the memory. Over entire request is around 95% to 98%. Which means 95 to 98 out of 100 data will be accessed from where? Memory. Cache the information. Okay? The other only two or three access will go to the hard disk drive because of blocking. Okay, so this will be blocking. Also, blocking factor means how many records can you keep in one block? For example, one record is the 100 byte, fixed the size. In this case, how many records can each block keep? Five, right? One, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. The other 12 byte will be free. So, blocking factor is five. Five record for each block. At that time, if you want to reuse the this one for the next block, which means the sixth block will be 12 by 88. The remainder end point. This is called span the record. Span means S-P-A-S, span record. It's a span. 
between two blocks. If you do not want to spend such a thing, 100, then throw away 12 byte because it's too small. That is unspent. Okay? Which one will be faster? Unspent or spent? Unspent. Unspent is definitely faster. Why? If the data is spent, record is spent, how many times? You need to read one time, then two times. I. Okay? So somebody may ask, is it very expensive? No, not in case of one. But think about one million, 10 million of the data are spent. At the time, it's a totally different story. It will be double time. If your query takes uh, one hour, so if data is spent, it's uh, two hours. Sometimes, okay, let's see. So that is the block. And spend record and unspend record. Then finally, our file being, so that is our file structure. In addition to that file structure used in database, we need such an operation. We can open the file. That is open operation. And we can search the data file. Find the next is the next record. Next record. And we in the data, select, insert, delete, modify, close, and reorganize. I think most of the operations are easy to understand except the reorganization. What is the reorganization operation? Any idea? If the data gets fragmented, uh, what does that mean for fragmented? If uh, uh, there is a lot of IO, the data gets fragmented here and there, so we try to defragment it once again for the performance. So in operating system, if you are using the Windows, Windows has the tool, utility to defragment. So what does that mean, defragment? <coughs> One file, unfortunately, cannot be stored continuously. It will be piece by piece everywhere. Which means when you access the entire file, you need to access this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. It takes longer time than the one chunk of the file. Right? Two. It's the same problem because since we are using the lock, also and the data, this data will be, sometimes we have a very small chunk, free space. It's not enough to keep the one record and insert and the other here. So it's everywhere because of delete, update, and modify the data. Okay? So at that time, whenever you read the data, it takes longer than one record will be here, 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 everywhere to maximize the util utilization of space. Okay? Then, how can you uh, defragment such a thing? By compaction. Compaction, how can you do that? By uh, removing all the unused uh, space and make it as a one big. Uh, it's not that complicated. Remove everything. Better. Remove, be quick. That's it. It's a simple process. That is called the reorganization. Yes, you can be reducing uh, extra space. Mm. That uh, uh, it will move uh, with all the, uh, the not continuous. Yes, operating system is different.